Hi, in this video, we're going to have a look at the build your own virtual circuit activity that you were asked to do based on a FET simulation of a uh, circuit. Now, uh, to access the uh, simulation, you just need to click on this URL inside the uh, activity sheet, uh, or you could retype that URL into a browser on a desktop or a mobile device. So let's have a look at what we were going to be building inside the simulator. The first circuit that we asked were asked to build was a circuit that looked similar to this diagram over here. So I have the simulation environment open and I'm going to grab a battery and I'm going to grab a wire and I'm going to move the edge of the battery and stick the wire onto it. What else did we need? We needed a light bulb. Oh, I see that we don't want to connect the wire directly there, we want to connect the light bulb. So drag a light bulb on, then connect the wire up, uh, then we've got another wire and a ammeter down here at the bottom. So grab another wire, and there is an ammeter, grab hold of the ammeter, and we can connect those up like that, and there is the circuit, more or less, uh, as it is in the diagram. Now we can see that the current flowing through the circuit is 0.9 amps. Why is that? Well, if we have a look at the battery, we can see the battery is giving us 9 volts. Clicking on the battery, we can change the voltage of the battery. So, you know, the greater the voltage, the brighter the light will flow, uh, will be because the greater the current will flow. Uh, but let's take it right back down to 9 volts again. And we can see that the uh, light bulb has a resistance of 10 ohms. So, according to Ohm's law, you know, the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance, and 9 divided by 10 is indeed 0 0.9. If we were to make this resistance, let's say, 9 ohms, then the current would be exactly 1 amp, rather than 0 0.9 amps. Okay, so we can see that this is accurate in terms of Ohm's law. Now, the next thing that we needed to do was to add a second light bulb into this circuit. And in that case, it was just a simple series circuit that we needed to build. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to disconnect that wire over there. I'm going to grab another light bulb. Let's connect that bulb up there. That one over there. Connect that up with that. And non unsurprisingly, the current in our circuit has reduced. And it's reduced by half because now we have a total resistance in the circuit of 10 ohms plus 10 ohms. That's 20 ohms. So we've doubled the resistance. We've kept the voltage the same, which means that the current flowing through this must have exactly halved. Uh, again, we can increase the voltage. If we make the voltage double what it was, well, then the current will get back to normal because now the doubling of resistance has been counterbalanced with a doubling of the voltage. And remember, the current is the voltage divided by the resistance. So if we double the resistance and we double the voltage, we'll keep the current the same. But we kept the voltage at, 11, at, at 9 volts, and we can see that the current halved. Now, think about this in the context of your house and uh, light bulbs in two rooms. If we were to connect all those light bulbs in series, well, can you see that as you were turning light bulbs on or adding light bulbs to the circuit, all the bulbs in your house would just get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer because the voltage of the supply is 220 volts. You know, it goes up a little bit here and there, but it's not going to go up substantially. So the voltage is essentially fixed. So if we were to wire up our house's, our house's lights in series, as we added more light bulbs in series, the brightness of each of those bulbs would get less and less and less because the current flowing through the circuit would get less and less and less because the current would go down as the resistance goes up. So, is there another way that we can wire a, uh, the lights inside a house? And it turns out that there is. We can wire them in parallel. But what does that really actually mean? I want you to take a look at this. I'm going to put a battery back on the stage here. And I'm going to let each light bulb see the battery as if the other light bulb wasn't there. What do I mean by that? Well, 
If I put a, a light bulb on that side and another light bulb on this side and I connect them up such that they don't really know that the other light bulb is there, see what happens. Okay, uh, let's get an ammeter going in each circuit. Uh, we'll put the ammeter there and another ammeter there. Okay, we need another wire from there to there and then another wire from there to there. Okay, so there we've got the one circuit, you know, as it was, uh, 0 0.9 amps flowing, 10, amp re uh, 10 ohm resistance, 9 volt power supply. But now I'm going to wire up this other circuit like this and a wire from there to there and see what happens. Ah, now suddenly both light bulbs are as bright as each other and the current through each part of the circuit is the same. Now it's as if to this light bulb, this light bulb doesn't exist. And it's as if to this light bulb, this light bulb doesn't exist. They are both seeing the same voltage. They both see the source of power, the battery, uh, as if there's no other uh, current uh, flowing in the circuit. What the battery though sees is the battery is going to have to deal with two currents, both of 0 0.9 amps. So the battery is going to have to do some more work. Each light bulb is going to draw 0 0.9 amps from the battery. And the battery is going to have to supply not just one circuit's worth of 0 0.9 amps, but two circuits worth of 0 0.9 amps. So the battery is going to do more work, but at least then each light bulb is as bright as the other. Now, this you know could work in a, in a house, but it, there is a more efficient way for us to wire this that, that takes less wire. And that's the traditional parallel circuit that we so often see. So let's wire that up together. Now, all that I need to do to do that is just undo that wire there. And I'm going to, it's going to get this circuit running again. And I'm going to undo that over there. And I'm going to put this light bulb oh yeah, over there. Let's undo that. Let's undo that. And let's actually just delete. Oh, what's happening? I'm going to have to undo both of those. Okay. Take that one, delete that one. Let's join those two up again. Now, instead of putting this other circuit on this side of the battery, I'm going to use this piece of wire here to supply both light bulbs as if they both see the same uh, current. Now I can't put it over there because now the current's going to have to flow through that resistor before it gets to this light bulb. So I'm going to have to put, I'm going to have to join it up there and they're going to have to join that one up there. Okay now this light bulb can be joined up over there. We can put the ammeter there. Let's put a wire between the ammeters. And we need another wire to close this part of the circuit over there. Okay, now we've got two circuits of traditional parallel circuit, more or less. So in this circuit here, we've got um, uh, 0 0.9 amps. I'll explain why this is 1.8 amps in a moment. And in this circuit here, we've got 0 0.9 amps. Both light bulbs are glowing uh, the same brightness. Now I'm going to just switch some of these things around for a moment. Let's just break some of these circuits. And break this one. And break all of that. Okay. So I want to put this ammeter over here. Join that up over there. Join that up over there. We can join that one there, we can join that one there. Now we can see that both ammeters read 0 0.9 amps. Why did the ammeter over here read 1.8 amps? Well, let's put an ammeter in its place and we can see why that is. So break that up, bring another ammeter up, put a wire there, connect that up, 
Oh, I don't really need that wire, so I can delete it. I'm just going to join those emitters together and join that one up over there. Okay, so now take a look here. So flowing in this part of the circuit through the light bulb down here, this branch, 0 0.9 amps. Flowing through this part of the circuit through this branch, 0 0.9 amps. But where these two currents meet, this 0 0.9 and this 0 0.9, well, they total up to 1.8 amps. This is a representation of the current in this part of the circuit. Now the reason why we tend to wire things in parallel in this formation, rather than having everything connect to the battery independently, is that we can save wire. It's, it, it's, in principle, it's exactly the same circuit. All that we're doing is we're using pieces of wire here to supply lots of resistors in parallel, rather than having to duplicate this piece of wire and this piece of wire for every single resistor in that parallel circuit.